Hi guys, my name is Julia, welcome to Book Time. Today I'm going to be doing a video about Australian written crime fiction and some of, so I'm going to go through five or six authors. I've read some of their books and I'm going to talk about those as well as the other books that I've written that I want to read but also some authors that I haven't read anything of yet so it's sort of a mix of my recommendations but also books I would really like to get to and also, if you guys have read crime novels, particularly Australian ones, well, they don't have to be Australian, I just like crime fiction, please let me know below because I'm always looking for new tips. So I've got my list here. The first author I want to talk about is Emma Viskic. She wrote Resurrection Bay, which I've just read. That's the first book in her Caleb Zellick series. So Caleb Zellick is a private investigator. And I talked about that in my recent wrap up, so I'll link that down below. But essentially he is um, a private detective and in the first novel, he's investigating a series of robberies with his um, colleague, Frankie. And as it turns, like it sort of escalates and his best friend who was a policeman gets killed. That happens at the very start, not a spoiler. And so they are investigating um, how this policeman got involved and whether other policemen are involved um, in this sort of web of organized crime. So um, it was a really good book. I would say the mystery and crime element was not particularly complex, but what was really nice was the characterization of Caleb, Frankie, Caleb's um, ex-wife, Kat, and a bunch of other characters. So it, it often became about the drama and tension in the relationships that emerged as a result of their investigation into this crime. So that made it worth definitely worth reading, even though the actual crime element, once you got to the reveal, wasn't that complex. I still really enjoyed the book. So I do recommend that one. And what I would love to get to next is the second book in that series called And Fire Came Down. So what I haven't yet mentioned is that Caleb is profoundly deaf and has sign like he speaks with sign language well actually he i think he can speak but he also uses sign language and emma Vizgich actually learned how to sign and did a lot of research and how to um you know write a thoroughly drawn character who is also deaf and it's really interesting because i feel like it's not just chucked in there to have a disabled character it's it his deafness uh, you know it's it's all about how it affects his sense of self in positive ways, in more frustrating ways for him, how he negotiates his career as someone who is deaf. It's really interesting and well written. So that's really cool. Now in the second novel, I think the Kickstarter is that a woman who is, I think she dies, but she pleads to Caleb for him to rescue her in sign language. That's the Kickstarter of the story. And I think again, the mystery draws him back to his hometown, Resurrection Bay. And again, I think there's going to be some intrigue around his relationship with his ex-wife and, you know, how the crime affects his relationships with other people in the town and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And Emma Vizgic's books are published by Bonnier Echo. So Echo Publishing is a, I think it's a Melbourne-based, very small independent press, but they publish really great stuff. So it's really cool that she's getting a lot of attention and that this series is continuing. The next author I want to talk about is Peter Cotton. He is a Melbourne-based writer. He actually happened to be a good friend of mine's landlord for a year or so and really nice guy. Anyway, before I, long before that, I read his first novel called Dead Cat Bounce, which was a crime novel set in Canberra. Now, Canberra is Australia's capital city. You, if Obviously, if you're in Australia, you will have heard of it, but if you're overseas, you may not have because it's very small and has its own territory the Australian Capital Territory and it was very interesting to me that he set a crime novel there because generally and no offense to anyone from Canberra but the sort of like stereotype of Canberra is that it's really boring and nothing ever happens there because it's just kind of the political uh, center which makes it sound interesting like Washington DC or something but that's not how it's perceived in Australia <laughs> like you wouldn't think of a crime novel being set there Anyway, it was a really interesting novel and it was sort of about um, the alleged assassination of our Prime Minister. The detective's name is Darren Glass and it was really gripping. I really enjoyed it. Um, I highly recommend it. It was really well written, really sort of tight prose 
and I was really impressed that he made sort of a political crime novel so interesting set in Australia because it's just not what you expect and there's as far as I know there's not many novels like that so that was really good so now the second novel in that series so I think it has the same detective Darren Glass is out and that's called Dead Heat so as far as I can tell this one's about um, Australian Abor an Australian Aboriginal woman who his body is washed up in Jarvis Bay, which is a real town. And Darren Glass is called in from Canberra to go and investigate. And I think he links that murder to another case of a missing Navy sailor. And so he's teamed up with a Navy officer and the two of them investigate these crimes. And I think they might be taken into Central Australia. And um, there's, you know... They have to work with the indigenous community there, but there's also a biker gang involved. And it sounds really interesting, and I'd be really interesting to hear how he handles um, the indigenous element uh, and how that's written. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. I hope to get to that soon. The third author is someone I haven't read any of her books. It's Holly Throsby. She is actually, well, I knew her as a musician, a singer-songwriter. Um, I don't know if she's from Melbourne, but I remember seeing her play at pubs around here, you know, 10 years ago when I used to go see a lot of live music. She has written two mystery novels. The first one's called Goodwood and the second one called C is called Caesar. <laughs> the second one is called Cedar Valley. And they are both set in, they're both sort of small town mysteries. I'm not sure whether these are sort of traditional crime novels, but they certainly seem to be mystery novels. So in Goodwood, um, where everyone knows everyone, the most popular girl from school goes missing and then one of the town's most popular residents goes missing. And I think the story follows all the speculation about what's happened to them and then one of the main characters who the story might be told from her perspective also has her own secrets which sort of feed into this stuff. So I think it's about sort of like small town gossip and rumour and how that can be reconciled with the real disappearance of a couple of people. The second one's called um, Cedar Valley, also set in a small town, but as opposed to two people going missing, two strangers arrive in this town. Um, one is, I think, just like a guy in a suit, and the other one is a young guy fresh out of university, and I think he's trying to find out some stuff about his mother. And then the town is trying to work out who these strangers are, but the strangers have also their own stuff they're trying to work out. Um, both of these novels are set in the 1990s. I think the first one's set in 1992, the second one in 1993. And I'm just really keen to read them. I, I mean, they've sort of had mixed reviews and I don't think they're, um, I think they're gonna be quite easy reads, but they sound sort of nostalgic and I think they're not funny novels, but they sound a little bit fun, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think it'll be nice, uh, nice, but good to read these books that are sort of set in small towns and really playing up the idea of the small town gossip and rumour and mystery. Um, maybe they have a little bit of a cosy vibe. I'm not sure, could be making that up. If you've read them, let me know and I'll correct myself, but I would really like to get to them soon. The next novelist I would really like to get to and who I have never read before is Peter Temple, who's written a number of books, including the Jack Irish series which has also been made into a tv show and also he's written a number of other books another like other crime books but not part of that series his novel truth won the miles franklin in 2010 and it won a bunch of other premiers literary awards as well so i'd really like to get to that one i keep looking down because i'm trying to read notes but do it inconspicuously and i'm doing it really badly i feel like i'm trying to focus at the camera while ignoring my notes um oh as it turns out Truth is the sequel to another book called The Broken Shore written by him. Anyway, I'll link him down below because he's written a whole bunch of stuff. I'm also really keen to get to the Jack Irish novels because they're set in Fitzroy, which is a suburb really close to where I live. It's where my husband's parents live. The TV show also stars Guy Pearce, which is pretty cool. I have seen some episodes of the TV show. I never watched it properly, but it's been reasonably popular. And Jack Irish is not a cop. He's an ex-lawyer, but I think he now solves crimes on his own. Oh, I think he's a debt collector. Um, anyway, I'd really like to read the books because he, Peter Temple's sort of known as one of Australia's sort of great crime writers. 
So I would love to get to those. If you've read any of them, let me know how you found them. The next author I want to talk about is Sarah Bailey, who's got two novels out. One is called The Dark Lake, which has been an international bestseller. I really want to get to it soon. I haven't read either of her books. The Dark Lake sounds good. It has a female detective called Gemma Woodstock. Harry's laughing in his sleep. It has a female detective called Gemma Woodstock, and I think she discovers an old, um, like a woman she went to high school with, face down in a lake and has to investigate this crime but it's she considers it quite a puzzle because this girl was extremely popular in high school very beautiful very beloved very successful and now her adult life is has appears not to be successful like she's living in a dingy apartment and all this other stuff so she's and it all occurs in quite a rural town so I love crime stories in rural towns so we'll see Hopefully that one's really good. There's also a second one in the series called Into the Night that's about Gemma Woodstock and a third one as well called Where the Dead Go. I'm not sure if that one's out yet, but I'd really like to get to those. I'd really like to get to... <laughs> He's laughing in his sleep again. I'd really like to read these ones. She's based in Melbourne. Um, Sarah Bailey's based in Melbourne. I love supporting Melbourne writers and um, has two kids and works in publishing. So I feel like, yeah, I just... I would love to support her by reading her books. Not that she needs my support. I'm pretty sure her books are doing very well, but I would still love to read them. Obviously, the two I haven't yet mentioned are Jane Harper. I'm not going to talk about her in great detail. I have read all her books. Liked The Dry. Really liked Force of Nature even more. Loved The Lost Man. Thought that was, like, definitely the apex of her work so far. And I'm not going to talk about them much just because a lot of people on BookTube have already read her or know about her she's talked about quite a lot for good reason um, I definitely recommend them if you haven't got to them yet particularly the lost man the the dry and force of nature are part of her detective series and um, the lost man's a standalone but it's it's really great all set in Australia in very different um, like physical environments so one's in a drought stricken country town one's in um, like the Victorian forest which is very wet and muddy and cold and hilly obviously and then one is set in the outback the lost man set in the outback the other one i haven't really talked about is scrublands the novel by chris hammer i actually haven't read it but i really want to but the reason i haven't talked about it that much is because again that's very popular on booktube a lot of people have read it and that one is also about a drought stricken country town but a priest actually kills a bunch of his parishioners and then a journalist a year later comes up to sort of um, like an investigative investigative journalist comes up a year later to investigate so I would love to get to that but again not talking about it heaps so that's just obviously there are so many more Australian crime writers that I would love to get to and love to talk about that's just a small smattering of maybe some that you haven't yet heard of some you probably have Again, if you've got any recommendations for crime from anywhere, please leave it down below because I'm always up for more tips. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye.